In this example, we're going to be using the journal entry method. I'll also be using the journal entry method kind of in a sense where uh, we can go in and utilize the bank feed slash journal entry method. It's kind of a hybrid uh, using the split option. Now this comes in handy when, when our clients have credit card processors, something like Stripe or Square or even PayPal, a third party credit card processor that's charging them a fee along with, you know, taking pro pay taking payments for them. So let's jump into that and what that might look like for us. Now be advised that you will need to get some kind of documentation or even access to this type of payment processor. So like a report, um, the deposit report would work. Um, just again, having access to your client's processor, say Square, Stripe, whatever. This would be really, really helpful to have ahead of time rather than trying to break it down later. Because remember, not everything, I guess you would say, not the entire amount of what you receive in your bank, say you're getting $500. And in this case, we're gonna be using some examples here with the bank feed and then um, with the journal entry. So we're gonna have a, a few different examples all wrapped into one, but you will need a source document regardless. Okay, so that's kind of where I'm getting at. So let's jump into that real quick. So now that we're in our QuickBooks, let's say we go down to our bank transactions and I'm just going to reload all of this. This is all reloaded information for today. Okay, let's just say that $55 was what was deposited by our payment processor. But as you can see, we don't have any um, invoices and we don't have anything in QuickBooks at the moment to match it. And that's because we, maybe your client is a hairstylist. <laughs> and I go back to hairstylist because this happens a lot. Um, and, or maybe your client, um, maybe they sell soap or some kind of artisanal craft. So we need to break down the amount that the processor is going to take out when they process the payment. So let's see. So let's go with, I'm going to go with the hybrid option first. Okay. And I mentioned that using the split, um, what you would do then is you can start with just categorize, there's no match and we're not gonna record as a transfer. The type of transaction would be a deposit because we're receiving money. Vendor or customer, if you know the vendor or customer and you wanna put it in there, that's fine. However, if you're working with um, a client that doesn't want to track who the customer is in QuickBooks, maybe they're using another outside app to track this, people like hairstylists don't usually track stuff like this, but, um, or like uh, people that do say um, some type of artisanal sell selling point, maybe they sell customized stickers or, you know, t-shirts or something of that sort where they, they don't know who these customers may be and they're not gonna track them in like an invoice or customer style. You know, that makes sense. Like you're gonna go to say a boutique, you're not gonna fill out your customers your, your information to that store if, if you don't want to, if you're not like totally interested. So, you know, like not everybody at Target is filling out all this information. So it's that kind of mentality where we might not have a, or we might have a client where they might not want to capture this information. And if that be the case, all we need to do is just delete that. We do, however, have to select an account, which is why, <coughs> excuse me, it's got the little asterisk right there. So what we're going to do is, excuse me, oh my goodness, <laughs> what a horrible time to have a coughing fit while recording. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to split. Okay, because keeping in mind, we say have um, some type of report uh, that we pulled from Square or Stripe or something like that. And we can see what we, what we need to record because... $55 is what hit the bank, but possibly we actually processed a total of, let's say $75. So we're missing a whole $20. And that $20 came in the, um, in the form of say processing fees. I know it's kind of, it's crazy. It's a little high out there, but you guys will catch what I'm saying. So 
from the customer when we sold the product, let's say it's a product, and maybe we sold some type of t-shirt, right? T-shirt sales. And if you already have this category set up as an income in your client's books, that's great. Then that would be what you want to, you know, instead of sales of product income, maybe you already have an income. You know, see how this one says, say, pest control. Uh, say we already have that. And, you know, we'll just go with pest control instead t-shirt sales. We'll stick to what our sample company does. So for pest control services, we charge a total of $75. So the client themselves, actually paid, or not our client, but our client's client, paid $75 out of their pocket. So that means that we put the $75 there. That is what is the total charge, gross. However, only $55 hit our bank. So where's that other money gonna go? How do we record that? See how we have the $20 difference here? This would come in the form of the bank fee or the merchant fee. Um, in this case, for fees, they have bank charges. We can easily add another expense called um, merchant fee, and that would be just fine. So, and you can, you know, for training, we can put merchant fee or processing fee, something like that. Either or, it doesn't matter. Choose the word that best suits you and your style. And then we would put negative $20. And that negative is going to make this an expense. So this will make sure that that expense goes into the PL. And that being negative, because that would make it a debit, it means that the expense goes up. If we were to keep it as a positive, the expense doesn't go up. And now we're over by $40. So we wouldn't be able to save because now this doesn't match our bank. So we need to make sure that we put that negative so that we can adjust that to back down to zero and account for our expense being the processing fee. I hope that makes sense. Again, you guys can always ask me more questions. All right, well, now let's say that we accept, um, apply and accept, so everything goes well. Now I'm gonna give you guys an example of what to do uh, in the event that we need to uh, maybe add sales tax. So sales tax would look something like, let's just go ahead and delete that and that one there. So we're starting fresh with the same hybrid. Um, and this is a split. I know this isn't, we haven't gotten to, oh, sorry. We haven't gotten to the journal entry part yet, but we will. So say we go back, I should just love that, geez. So say we go back to pest control and uh, it was, say, $70. $70. We're going to add a line. And then the sales tax, well, they don't have a sales tax, but you would need to set that up. You would have a sales tax, and it would be in liabilities, and be current liabilities. And it would be sales tax payable. And sales tax payable means that it's going to be on the balance sheet side. So here it describes that it's to track sales tax that you've collected but not yet remitted to the IRS. That's basically what is going on here. So I like to make sure um, I'm very clear about this, even with new clients that aren't sure. I'll, I'll name this um, account sales tax collected something like that to keep everybody on track with what, what's what been going on. And, you know, I'll even put this in the description here so that everybody knows that is what I'm doing with that. Um, we can go ahead and save and close. Sales tax collected, and it was in the amount of $5. So we still get $75 from the client, but now I've broken it down. And again, I'm looking at a sales receipt, a report, or something that's telling you this. I'm not guessing. I'm just giving you guys a scenario right now without an actual like report that I can break down. However, I do believe I have some videos on my YouTube regarding sales tax or on my TikTok that you guys can see the breakdown with using like an actual report that I got from a client. Uh, and then we would do the bank charges again. 
and it'd be processing fee. Oh, I thought I processing fee. And this would be the negative 20, leaving us at the 55, dif oh, zero difference and 55. And we are going to get more into sales tax and how that's remitted and collected and how we set that up uh, later and in our lessons. But that is the split journal entry way. I like to call it just like the split journal entry or the split transaction, uh, bank transactions ad. There's not really like a, a real term for this, but this is where I'm talking about here. All right, now let's actually go into the journal entry um, function of this. And let's create one that's similar. Say um, you don't do the split and you don't have to. You can create a journal entry. This is um, one of the more simplified ways to add any kind of transaction into QuickBooks. You just need to have a good understanding of debits and credits and how they affect every account. This was covered on our uh, intro to bookkeeping video. So be sure to ring back to that one and um, look up the debits and credits lesson. And if you get stuck again, just let me know. So for purposes of this training, let's go ahead. We're going to be using that $55 um, uh, amount. And I think the date is weird on that one. I think it was like 1116 last time I saw that. I'll just put it there. I might be wrong, but last time I was looking at the date on that bank transactions feed, it was like 11, 16, 24 was the more recent charge, which is a month in the future. Crazy. So the amount we're going to hit would be the um, same. It's the same split, you know, from that split screen that we saw, we're going to do the similar things. We're just going to add one more account line. So we did the income account, right? So it was pest control. We're going to even include the sales tax on this one. Pest control, uh, that's going to go up in credits, and that was 70. Let's go sales tax. And uh, that goes up. That goes up to $5. Okay, and this one was the bank fee. And this one stays in the debits column, but it's not 75, it's $20. Now we're at 55, so if you scroll down, oh, well, if you add them together, we're at 55. But now, the one thing that's missing and what people fail to uh, really get a big grasp on is that this journal entry also, it always needs to balance, right? We're missing $55 here. We need it to match up to 75. Both of these columns need to match. And what we're missing, and the, hopefully we can get this all figured out, if you don't already know, it would be the actual bank. So imagine we did this on our, we already did something similar to this, but on the bank transaction feed, meaning that we were already, we already saw that it hit that bank and it only showed up on that bank feed because it was part of the bank's charges. Here on the journal entry, this journal entry doesn't indicate what bank we're on, what bank we're using, what bank account, what credit card account. So we need to add that on to the journal entry so it can mimic what we just did in our previous exercise with the split entry on the bank feed. So we would choose checking and that would be the $55. This is the $55 that we saw on the bank feed. I hope you guys are kind of making that connection. Um, and I wanted to teach you this way so that we could make a more seamless connection with how journal entries are created. So now we've got the 75, 75. This doesn't mean that the $75 is gonna show up on the bank feed or that that's what the banking feed is showing. No, this is what is connected to that bank, right? This right here, that's what makes journal entries, I think, confusing is because you only see these lines and these amounts per these lines, and that's it on your bank fee. I'm sorry, on your like reports. You're not 
really seeing this total here. So many people mess that up. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to save and close so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Now it'll match our bank feed. See, so told you it was like 1116. <laughs> and here it is. It's exactly right. It's the match that's found. And it says journal entry one for $55. If I was to not put that in there and it was wrong, it wouldn't be able to match properly. And let me show you what I mean. So it says journal entry zero. That's because it zeroes out. If we accidentally say put 75 here, or it won't let me close with that. Um, say we use the wrong, um, the wrong account, save and close. It won't show up. At least it shouldn't. There you go. It won't show up because it's not including this bank. We're on checking where it's at and where it will not show up as a match is on the MasterCard because we don't have a $55 charge or receiving amount on the on that end. You see, it won't even it won't show up on the savings because we didn't hit the savings for that amount. So our journal entry was wrong. Oops, sorry, wrong the wrong one. I hope you guys can make that connection there. So I'm gonna go back and change that for us real quick. And put that back. And the um, good thing about using a journal entry is uh, you just get a little more comfortable using that. Uh, doing it in the split version just allows you to uh, you don't have to put in the checking line and it creates a different style of transaction. So there are benefits to either way that you do it. Again, just making sure that you have some kind of report or some kind of source document to back this up is going to be key to this learning or this example <laughs> and this style of entry.